Right, hello all artists, I'm Rob and in this video I'm going to show you how I painted a digital portrait of a Celtic woman using Photoshop. So I hope you get some value out of this video, I hope you pick up a few tips and let's get into it. Step 1, the initial sketch. Now this tutorial can be completed in both Photoshop and Procreate, but I'm going to show you some of the sped up process of my painting which I completed using Photoshop and its tools. Start off by setting up the canvas to match the dimensions of the original photo reference or to your own liking. You can then tone the canvas with a warm or cool colour for the background and fill using the paint bucket tool. This removes the glare of the white canvas and encourages you to get started. Then sketch the outline of the woman's head, facial features and the hair on a separate layer. You can use a pencil brush, which closely resembles a 2B traditional pencil to give a more traditional feel, or a simple hard round brush. Take your time to get the proportions right and enjoy the process. So next up is step two. Once you have the initial sketch in place, you can start painting. In the image you just saw, it showed how the first step of the painting would look if you were to paint a base colour under the sketch layer in Photoshop, which you could then paint over. But this isn't the approach I chose to go with. Feel free to start the painting with what works best for you. When painting traditionally, I either first start by painting in the mid-tones of the skin or the shadows. You can go either way, try both and see what works. For this painting, I chose to paint the mid-tones first and then I begin painting some of the halftones and shadows. You can create a layer beneath the initial sketch and select the colours that you think is the mid-tone for both the face and the hair of the person and paint them in. Or you can simply just decide to paint on top of the sketch in a direct manner. I also find that it's a good idea to gradually build up all of the painting at once instead of focusing on one area. This helps you to see the bigger picture can stop you getting bored and also helps the image to have more unison and harmony as you select the colours you have already created at each stage of the painting. Try to stay zoomed out away from your canvas at this stage. Step 3. Painting skin tones and hair using layers. For this step we work on gradually building up paint layers using the hard round brush set to opacity and focus on detecting both the warm and cool colours and the lights and darks of the skin and hair in the painting. Keep looking back and forth between your painting and the model or your photo reference. Notice the warm and cool variations in the skin. When painting the hair, focus on the large shapes first. Use a large brush and notice where the lighter clumps or strands are. You can use multiple layers to paint in different areas of the painting if you are unsure. But if you are confident and want to replicate the practice and challenge of painting in traditional media, use just one layer. Step 4. Building up some of the details. I then begin working on some of the smaller details such as the colour of the eye and I then introduce freckles to the skin of the woman. I create the freckles on a separate layer using a speckled or skin texture brush set to scatter. And I then use a soft brush and lightly erase the areas and reduce the opacity of some of the freckles to keep it realistic. Keep working around different areas and build up the painting and its details gradually. Also paint the hair strands in the direction they move away from the head for greater realism. As a side note, I strongly encourage you only select colours using the colour picker tool and not directly from the original photo reference if you're using one. This will train your eye and mind to see the warm and coolness of each colour and be able to select it manually, which is similar to mixing paint in traditional media.
Step 5. Focusing on the Celtic design of the hair. I keep developing the skin tones and lightly blend them in using areas using a hard round brush set to opacity, leaving some soft and hard edges. I then start working on the hair strands and details around the painting. I bring in some Celtic inspired patterns into the hair design which consist of spirals and intricate weaving lines and shapes, making the portrait more illustrative, authentic and original. I also start to work more on the background using a soft brush, darkening the corners to frame the portrait. The background complements the red and orange hair, which is a feature of many of the original native Celtic people from Ireland, Scotland, England and Wales. Step 6. Detail work and light reflections. I keep working on details in the skin and hair. I also paint reflections on the shoulder and neck of the woman on a separate layer using a soft round brush set to opacity. At this stage you can really relax and enjoy the process of bringing the painting towards a finish. Step 7. The finishing touches. Finally, I add some faint fire embers for an extra spark of visual interest and creativity. I find painting the elements like fire, flames and embers fun and enjoyable. I paint then in first using the lasso tool for a clean shape and then add a blur filter to give the embers the appearance of being in motion. I zoom out, check the painting, make final corrections and add an adjustment layer, slightly increasing the brightness and contrast and vibrancy of the image and then call it finished. For any of you who would like to download my tutorials as PDF documents that you can refer to offline anytime, I have this tutorial available as a download on my Patreon page which I will link in the description. I will be making more PDF tutorials and downloads in the near future if you'd like to subscribe and support me there. So I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, please do like, share and subscribe and hit the notifications button to be notified when I post a new video. Thank you and I'll see you next time.